Come to our electron line. Here we're trying to find the second moment of area of a, well, let's say, square. square. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Welcome to our electron line. Here we're trying to find the second moment of area of a square. The square has dimensions a by a. And we have an area element here, dA, which is defined as dx times dy, a distance r away from the origin. Notice that we've placed the square right so that we have the center of the square at the origin, which means when we calculate the second moment of area, we will also calculate the torsional constant. We can imagine that square to be a cross-sectional area of a square pillar, and when we apply a moment, a torque to that pillar, we expect it to deform somewhat. There'll be a torsion there, and so we want to calculate the torsional constant that will then be necessary to figure out how much it resists that torsional, how much it resists that moment, the turning of the pillar in one direction versus the other side. All right. We have a general equation here that the first, or no, the second moment of area with respect to the origin is the distance from the area element to the origin squared times dA. We can define that distance squared as x squared plus y squared and dA as dx times dy, which means we're going to end up with two integrals, one that has x squared times dx dy and one that has y squared times dx dy, both of them, because of the symmetry, will have limits from minus a over 2 to a over 2, both in the x and in the y direction. We'll see in just a moment that those integrals will be identical in value, and therefore we only have to do one, but you'll see how to do the other one. And let's start with the first one here and see what we get. So when we do the first integral, the double integral from minus a over 2 to a over 2, of x squared dx times dy. We'll first do the dy. So this is equal to the integral of x squared dx times the integral of dy from minus a over 2 to positive a over 2, which is equal to x squared dx. Well, I can't forget the integral sign here. Times y evaluated from minus a over 2 to positive a over 2. When you plug in the upper limit, you get a over 2. When you plug in the lower limit, you get minus a over 2. But since you're subtracting, you're basically adding the 2, which gives you an a. So this can be written as a times the integral of x squared dx from minus a over 2 to positive a over 2. Next, we integrate that. That would be x cubed over 3. So this gives us a x cubed over 3 with the limits of minus a over 2 to positive a over 2. Again, when you plug in the lower limit and you subtract, you're basically adding that. So you end up with a divided by 3 times, that would be a cubed over 8 plus a cubed over 8. Because the negative cancels out the negative, which means that this will be equal to, so the first integral will be equal to, uh, that would be over 4, that would be a to the fourth over, not 4, 4 times 3 is 12. Ah, there we go, 12. So that would be the first integral. That's when we integrate this one right here. Let's see. So we integrate the first one. Notice when we integrate the second one, we now integrate in the opposite direction, but since we have perfect symmetry, it's a square, all the dimensions are the same, the square is right at the center, we get the exact same value for the second integral as well. So that means that the total second moment of area is going to be equal to a to the fourth divided by 12 for the first integral plus a to the fourth divided by 12 for the second integral which means that this becomes a to the fourth divided by 6. Now, 1 over 6 is equal to 0 0.167 a to the fourth to three decimal places. The reason why I convert it to a decimal as well is because we know that experimentally, when we measure the torsional constant for something that looks like this, a square pillar with dimensions a by a, we get it to be 0 0.14 times a to the fourth, 
And when we calculate it analytically, we get 0 0.167 a to the fourth. So why the discrepancy? Well, it turns out the only time that the analytical result end up to be exactly the same as the experimental result is if the cross-section of the pillar is a circle. And that's the one that we calculated in a previous video. So when we have any other shape, we do notice that there's some dif difference between the analytical result and the actual experimental result. But it is fairly similar, fairly close. It gives us a fairly good idea what the value will be. There's, of course, the, the way it's structured with the corners and all that, and you try to turn, twist something, the torsion motion because of the shape of the object will have some results from the analytic result. But again, like I said, we get to numbers that are fairly close, and this is how we do it analytically.